you want to record your videos directly on your PC, 4K resolution, why not, and also to have the audio synced with the video directly while using a great microphone. That will be a light speed professional way to create your videos. Unfortunately, there are not many ways to do it and also you need to know the settings. You know what? I did it. This video is recorded in this way and I will show you everything you need to know to achieve the same result. I will show you first the setup and the hardware you need. After we go to the camera settings, the software and all the settings. I use a Sony ZV-10 with a Sigma 16mm lens to obtain this great image quality and have that creamy blur behind me. And the camera is powered by a dummy battery to never care about charging it. Also, because I want to script my videos to have them more compressed and precise, I use Delgato Prompter to read my scripts. But we need to connect the camera to the PC to record like this. Many creators want to connect the camera directly with the USB-C cable to the PC, but only a few cameras on the market allow us to stream 4K with the USB cable and even those after a long shooting session will overheat this way. The best way to do it is to use the HDMI output. You can do this if your camera model has clean HDMI output. Check on the manufacturer's website and see if your camera has clean HDMI output. This means that you will not see the information that is on the camera screen while recording. Also, check if your camera can stream 4K through the HDMI port. The ZV-10 can do that and it's perfect for this application. To connect it to the laptop, we also need a capture card. You can do your research, but I'm telling you that in the end, the best capture card you can find on the market for 4K streaming and crystal clear quality is Elgato Comlink 4K. There are other much cheaper versions, but the quality is bad or, or the capture card freezes or has other problems. I have used this one for years and is the greatest capture card you can find on the market. And it costs at the time of publishing this video around $97. By the way, if you want to buy it or anything else from my setup, I will add affiliate links in the description. If you click on my links, you're not going to pay anything extra, but I will earn a small commission and this will help me keep sponsors away from this channel and create more valuable content for you. Thank you. I connect the capture card to the computer through a USB hub because my laptop does not have a USB-A port and I also need to connect more accessories to the PC, but if you have a big desktop or a laptop with a USB-A, you can connect it directly. But be careful to use a port that is USB 3.0. I connect the capture card to the laptop and the camera with a micro HDMI cable to the capture card. The camera has a micro HDMI port and the Elgato Comlink 4K has a full HDMI port. That's it, it doesn't require any driver, but you need to do the right settings on the camera. Once you connect it to the PC via the capture card, go to the menu, menu number 2, submenu number 1, and set the file format to 4K and at the recording settings use 24 or 25 fps. 25 if you are in PAL mode and 24 if you are in NTSC mode. If you use 30 fps, your eye tracking will not work when using the HDMI output. If you don't know what PAL or NTSC modes are, I will add a video about the camera settings in the description. Next, go to the menu number 5, submenu number 2 and go to HDMI settings. Here, set the HDMI resolution to 2160p, 1080p, HDMI info display off, TC output off, and control for HDMI off. Now, go to menu number 3, network 1, go to smartphone connect and turn it off. PC remote function off. Next, go to the menu number 2, movie 2, go to proxy recordings and turn it off. If you have this function on, the eye tracking will not work when using the HDMI output. Now, go to the menu number 1, submenu number 4, and set the focus mode to continuous AF, focus area to wide, face eye priority in AF on, subject detection human, right left eye select auto, face eye frame display on. And now you are connected with the HDMI cable and the eye tracking for autofocus will work perfectly. These are the settings for the camera. If you are using it for long recording sessions or streaming, go also to the menu number five, power settings option, 
and set auto power off temp to high to keep the camera on if it will overheat. But if you use a dummy battery, keep the screen flipped and use this function, you will not have problems with this camera. And like this, you have the camera ready to record your videos directly on your PC. Now, let's set the software on your PC and make the sound perfectly in sync with the video and record by pressing one single button. To record the videos directly on PC, I use OBS Player. This streaming and recording software is free, easy to use, and it works on PC or Mac. After you connect your camera and do all the settings, install and open the OBS Player. First, go to Settings and Video, and here type in your resolution. If you record 4K, add 3840 by 2160. Keep in mind that to record 4K video, your PC or laptop needs to be a powerful one. It's almost impossible to tell if it will work fine by the specifications, so you need to try it. If your PC can't handle the 4K recording, add here Full HD instead of 4K, 1920 by 1080. And if you use Full HD, you also don't need to have the camera in 4K mode, so change these settings also. I will continue this demonstration using 4K. After you enter the resolution, select your frame rate, the same as you chose in the camera. Now go to Output and select at Output mode Advanced. Then go to the Recording tab. And at Type, select Custom Output FFmpeg. On the FFmpeg Output type select Output to File, File Path, select where you want your recordings to be saved, Container Format MP4, Video Bitrate, I keep it at 50,000, Keyframe Interval, I keep it as it is 237, and at the Video Encoder, you need to test some of them to decide what's the best one for you, because these names can be different from one computer to another. On both Mac and Windows, I find this one. LIBX264 default encoder. And it's working great, but on my laptop sometimes I saw small moments with artifacts on the image. The important thing is to find one of these codecs that are H264. As an example, on my Mac I also have this one, H264 Video Toolbox, and this one is working great for me. On my Windows laptop I can't find it, but instead I have H264 and VEC NVIDIA. And because I know that this laptop has an NVIDIA graphic card, this is working the best. If you have another kind of graphic card, you should search for an H.264 codec with your graphic card name or just try the ones with the H.264 if you don't know anything about your graphic card. This will be different from one computer to another. So. Here you want to spend half an hour and find the best one for you. Also, the default H.264 one could work perfectly for you. Try them out. At the Audio Bitrate tab, I choose 320 kilobits. And at Audio Encoder, AAC. And now, at the Audio tab, you need that the Mic Auxiliary Audio tab to choose your microphone or audio interface. Again, this is different according to your microphone. And then, click OK. On the left side, we have a tab called Scenes. Click on the plus button and add your scene. Name it as you like. And on the right side of the Scene tab, we have Sources. Here, click on plus again and add a video capture device. Name it again as you like and click OK. On the next window, select your capture card, CanLink 4K. And at Presets, select your resolution after click OK. Now, you should see yourself in OBS. But this is not everything because we will not have the audio in sync with the video. On the right side of the sources, you have the audio mixer. One of the tracks should be mic auxiliary. If your microphone is working and you selected it in the audio tab correctly, you will see the input signal. Don't forget to set the gain right and never go over this yellow zone in OBS because the audio will clip immediately. If you don't have signal, something is wrong with your microphone. If you have a signal here, let's take a quick test and see how it's working. I will press the record button and record something. One, two, three, mic check, mic check. This is a test to check the recording and the audio synchronization. And if you find this video useful until now, don't forget to press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. Thank you. I press stop recording 
go to the folder where I selected my recordings and play the video. One, two, three, this is a test to check the recording and the audio synchronization. Look at this one, the audio is faster than the video. 90% of the time this is what's happening. In this case, we need to delay the audio. On the audio mixer, on the track where you have your mic signal, click on the three dots and go to advanced audio properties. And here on your track mic auxiliary, on the tab sync offset, add 100 milliseconds to start with. Close the window, make another test and see if it's better. If you still have the voice unsynced, add 200 milliseconds, then 300 milliseconds and search, search to find the right spot where you have your voice synced with the video. For me, it's perfect at 300 milliseconds as an example. And if your voice is already delayed, add minus 100 or minus 200 milliseconds. Take a few tests and find the right spot. Don't go crazy with it. If you look at it too much, you will have the false impression that it's never in perfect sync. Find the right spot and leave it as it is. You can now go to profiles and export your profile to save the entire preset. You need to know that OBS Player is a software with a lot of updates, so in three, four, five months, some menus can be a little bit different, some functions can be moved somewhere else. You need to search for them. And now, all you have to do is open OBS, turn on the camera and press start recording. The video will be in your chosen folder with the audio synced. And this is the final result. Of course, you need next to edit the video and process the audio to make it louder. When you set up the system for the first time, it may look complicated, but after everything is connected and the software is set up correctly, your recording will work like a breeze. But all this will be for nothing if you don't light up your scenes as you should. The image will still be bad. To solve this problem in a small space and at an affordable price, I will give you a dedicated video. Watch my lighting setup and discover my secret technique to light up your videos without having hard shadows or reflections if you wear glasses.